And if you're not gonna go to war, you're not gonna fight for what you what you what you dream. Go do something else. I don't think people nowadays want to really fight for their dream. Now they talk about the creator economy landscape. Okay, so this is a good place to talk about the athlete economy landscape. What's going on guys? Today is Wednesday, August 21st, 2024, and we have 72 days before we launch the All Dreams platform to amateur athletes worldwide. It is 10.39 a.m. No, I have been here. <laughs> I have been in the office, but this is the first time that I'm getting to do this intro that I love to do. I love to do this because I look back on this and just go day by day and see what was going on and what was my energy every single day. And today I'm going to do some reading because I did not finish talking to humans. So I'm going to finish that book today uh, as I have uh, a deadline to finish it by tomorrow. And also, I did not go over the Beehive uh, pitch deck with, you know, on camera yesterday. I want to go over that uh, so you guys can see what uh, $2.6 million funding round without revenue looks like as far as a pitch deck. <laughs> okay, but it also has something to do with the founders for sure. Uh, why they can raise $2.6 million without revenue. Uh, the pitch deck is good, I'm sure, but it has to do with something with the founders and their network. So we'll go over that today as well. It's a going theme. After I leave the office, I go watch some type of youth sports. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this is something that I want to do worldwide. Whether I'm doing it here in Cartagena, whether I'm doing it in Uruguay, whether I'm doing it in Brazil, whether I'm doing it in Africa, whether I'm doing it in Europe. Uh, I just want to be a fly on the wall and watch sports, right? I'm building this sports technology company. I want to be engulfed in sporting and what it looks like for parents, what it looks like for the, for the athlete. Of course, I'm an athlete. so. This is something that I, I love. I love sports. I love watching people go after their dreams athletically, right? So after work, I'm going to find some place to watch some type of sports, some type of youth sports. Maybe talk to some parents a little harder because I'm not uh, fluent in Spanish, but I know a bit to have you know a little bit of a conversation just to see you know what their experiences in uh, raising a, a, a youth athlete and what's the experiences of their kid as a youth athlete. Um, so that's something that will be a going theme in this series is going to different places. It's a lot of soccer here. Uh, so soccer will be Primarily what I will be watching some basketball <clears throat> Definitely some baseball and I would love to see other sports running one sport uh, Is big here as well is like uh, rollerblading So I would love to you know watch some of you know some of those competitions one thing that's on my mind is people are so soft these days they're, they're soft. They want to take the easy way out. They want to go after the easy thing that they think can get them where, wherever they believe that they want to go. And I've been fighting for whatever dream that I've had since being a basketball player. I literally, I fought for that dream. I'm talking about real fisticuff altercations for that dream. I'm talking about 
whether I had to go travel someplace, whether I had to go fight for a plate, for a spot, whether I had to go after a coach in disagreement, but still be respectful, whatever I had to do, I was going to fight for it. And it's the same thing with this, this business. I don't think people nowadays want to really fight for their dream. Like this is a war. Every single day you go after whatever you're going after, it's a war. I just don't get this soft shit. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't get this soft shit. I, I like, I, I, I can't, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm telling you, whatever you trying to do, the shit takes 10 to 20 times, it's 10 to 20 times harder than whatever you think it's going to be. It's just, it's just a fact. What helps you is being gifted in some of the things that you're going after. after. But that don't guarantee shit. Every single day, somebody's trying to kick your ass to get to where you wanna be, or where they wanna be. It's so much competition in the world. That's why it's a war. Every single day, like it's a war. Like why people don't understand that or why they don't wanna, they don't wanna fight for that. I have no idea. So, per somebody that was in my comments, oh, go to the rainforest. You live near rainforest. You, you live near forest. Go do that. No, I'm in the office. Because there's somebody that also has a startup somewhere in the world that's trying to kick my ass. So, I need to be here. I need to be learning. I need to be talking to customers. I need to be organizing. I need to be documenting. I don't give a fuck what anybody else is doing in no forest. I'm not here to entertain anybody. Like, I can have zero subscribers for real talk and I will still be doing this the same way. This shit is a fight for your dreams. And I'm sorry that I'm so passionate about it, but I'm not sorry. It's just how it is. Go do something less competitive. Go do something that's easy because accomplishing your dreams ain't. And if you're not gonna go to war, you're not gonna fight for what you what you what you dream. Go do something else. Cause going after a dream, achieving dreams ain't for the faint of heart.
Alright, so let's go through the BI deck real fast. Um, I want to take out the things that I like about it and um, things that we don't have, right? So, title Beehive is the best platform for creators to build, grow, monetize their audience via email newsletter. Okay, so same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take ours out. Okay. All right, so our deck focuses on first thing, why am I my own customer, right? A little bit about me, four-time business founder, former professional basketball player, HBCU alum. Theirs talks about the platform, okay? Now they go into why Beehive, okay? So I like that slide, you know, like that's something that we possibly could do. So why all dreams, okay? So they talk about the creator economy, newsletters, the problem with existing newsletters, um, creators and they talk about sort of why in their team right here as I'm talking about right so now they talk about the creator economy landscape Okay, so this is a good place to talk about the athlete economy landscape. Instead, you know, we're sitting up here talking about the regular bullshit problem, solution, and you know, that we could be talking about the athlete economy uh, landscape. So now they talk about the newsletter space. So we can talk about The amateur athletic space, okay? So they talk about Facebook is rumored to launch a newsletter, Substack, Morning Brew, The Hustle. So they give examples. So then they do like a competitive analysis which is, you know, right here we have our competitors, but they do site builder, you know, so they, they go through the list of, and then they talk about the vulnerable market leader. This is good. Okay. And then the appetite for for email advertising. And then talk about Beehive and democratizing. So the value, this is their value prop right here. The value of Beehive, the creator, web develop, development, uh, data analysis, finance, engineering, sales, growth. Okay, so this is their value proposition. And then you have their features, okay? Then you have their formula to do it. You have their business model. So they have two business models. So the SaaS part and then the ad network. So they go over this right here, the SaaS uh, model and then the ad revenue. So in ours, we talk about the business model and we have these business models right here, but we don't, we don't break them down into, let's see, this is one, two, three different slides. And then they have their financial projections right we have our financial projections right 
uh -oh, right here, okay? And they talk about within the 12 months, but then also by 18 months, uh, month 18, they'll be in the green 250K in profit. So now they have the demo. We have our demos right here, the product, basically. Um, timeline, we have that, which is like the traction. Then the team, and then the fundraise. So we don't have the fundraise. This is definitely a little bit, this is definitely better crafted um, than uh, this typical uh, deck of ours, right? Where you talk, you know, problem, solution is boring, you know, like, you know, like, uh it it needs it needs more it needs more character i would say this has uh really really good character okay really really good character talking about the the vulnerable market leader or whatever which is something we can talk about then you know like i like this right here the appetite for email advertising. So like, man, the, the appetite for athletes to get funding and NIL. You know, so that's something that could be talked about in that in in our deck but man we, like it's like we're almost there <laughs> you know like you know like like we're almost there we're almost there so um yeah yeah so just going just wanted to go through that real fast didn't want to make a complete video about going through their deck or whatever but just wanted to do a quick comparison uh as i just finished uh reading this book right here so let's see so i just finished reading this book right here talking to humans really good book uh success starts with understanding your customers and um, man, one thing I wanted to run through real fast. Let me see. Not that. This right here, man. So the conclusion of the book uh, is crazy, okay? Because right here, when creating a new business is tremendous. Creating a new business is tremendously challenging, okay? Um, the ways you can fail are numerous. Like you have to get your customer in the market right. Uh, you have to get the revenue model right. You have to get the cost structure right. You have to get customer acquisition right. You have to get the product right. You have to get the team right. And you have to get the timing right, right? So just in our um, example, whatever, as far as all dreams, I don't even think this would be possible five years before because NIL wasn't even a thing, right? Um, but like he says, like if you screw up any of these things, I mean, man, you're, you're toast. So these are just some of the aspects that goes into starting a business, okay? Um, what I see is, I see people not doing this type of diligence as far as when they're starting a business is just, you know, idea. And look, I've did how many businesses, right? And I'm just learning about like this customer discovery thing, valuable stuff. But if I didn't know, I didn't know, you know? And uh, a lot of people that's what's happening. They're getting into things without 
the proper knowledge that will help them thrive or become successful in whatever they're trying to do. Um, I would say for anybody that's trying to build a business, I think you should look up that book, Talking to Humans. Um, it's a lot, a lot of good information in there. Uh, so yeah.